Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 1st, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jim today updated us on an older popular tool he wrote, macrobber.py. The tool is a Python implementation of a similar tool included in the Sleuth Kit, but it is suffered from some limitations that it inherited from underlying libraries and operating system hooks in that it wasn't able to properly determine the file creation times. More recently, Linux made the stat X call available to inter interrogate creation times and a Python library has been published that also provides access to creation times via StatX. Jim now incorporated this as an optional component. So if StatX is available, it will use it. If not, well, you won't get creation types. And Mac Robber also increased the resolution to microseconds. And in another update, Jim also improved his LE hex to IP, so the little endian hexadecimal to IP address script. It now includes port numbers in the conversion. And Microsoft is warning that it has observed threat actors compromising hybrid cloud environments by pivoting from on-premise to cloud. Once successful, the attacker will use the access to steal credentials or deploy ransomware, among other things. Microsoft's blog post goes over quite a bit of detail about uh, these uh, complex and rather involved attacks, as so often simply starts with a compromised workstation. Then you have your lateral movement until they end up in the domain controller. What gets interesting is if your organization syncs credentials between Active Directory objects and Microsoft Entra ID objects. If the attacker was able to obtain the sync credentials. The attacker is now able to compromise the cloud accounts. Microsoft observed that also some session hijacking for the cloud accounts is then often being used. And it also notes, and uh, well, that's sort of the little bit sad part here, very sophisticated attack, but uh, in all the cases that Microsoft observed where uh, this attack happened, well, at least one domain account uh, had no multi-factor authentication, which of course made this attack much simpler. And uh, this account also had the global administrator role. Microsoft is also ready to re-release the recall feature, which was announced earlier this year as part of the big AI push, but removed after concerns about data security uh, came up. Recall's intent is to basically create a database of everything that you do on the system and then make it searchable. This includes things like screenshots and the like, and basically then do optical character recognition on the screenshot and index all of this uh, to allow you then later to figure out what you have done in the past. Think about it like a Windows version with GUI support of bash history for the Unix uh, users here. Well, uh, they are now re-releasing it and they took to heart some of the criticism uh, that was brought up against the original recall feature. It now has proper security boundaries. You have to re-authenticate, so malware can't just easily access it. Its encryption keys are all protected by TPM secure enclaves. And is now also possible to just disable and uninstall this feature if you still don't want it. I'll add a link in the show notes to Microsoft's blog post that has all of this in a lot more detail than I can cover here. And Kyosuke Nakamura with the Japanese CERT published a blog post showing for current ransomware families what log messages may indicate a compromise by a particular type of ransomware. I've seen bits and pieces like this before, but this sort of very concisely summarizes it all in one location. So definitely important for you to review that, make sure that you are collecting the right event logs. This is all around Windows event logs, which of course sometimes are a bit cryptic and it's nice to have this reference available. 
And just uh, for vulnerabilities today, something that actually haven't covered last week. I think it came up uh, on Thursday or Friday. But uh, don't forget to patch Progress What's Up Gold. Progress fixed several vulnerabilities in this network monitoring uh, product. Two of the vulnerabilities reached a CSS score of 9.8. Eight, and there aren't a lot of details in the notice from Progress, but in the past, vulnerabilities in WhatsApp Gold have been exploited. So definitely something you do want to keep patched. Well, that's it for today. And by the way, if you happen to be in Singapore anywhere close by, I think I'll make it to Singapore once more. We're trying to get a class together there for intrusion detection for SEC 503. So if you're interested, well, uh, sign up uh, for the live version. There's also a talk I'll hopefully be able uh, to give, sort of an evening event and such. So definitely worthwhile if you're in that uh, area, uh, Korea, uh, Singapore and such, uh, to attend uh, this live. And Singapore is always a great place uh, to visit. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.